Leadership Track, empowering leaders to live life on purpose. Today's guest, Coach John Wooden. There's no way you can give 110% and there's no such thing as an overachiever. Leadership Track would like to welcome you as we spend the next half hour visiting with basketball's living legend, John Wooden. In his final 12 years at UCLA, his teams won a staggering total of 10 national championships. No other coach in history has won more than four. He is the only individual to be elected to the College Basketball Hall of Fame as both a player and a coach. He is truly one of a kind, a genuine living legend. It is not what Coach John Wooden has accomplished that is the measure of his greatness. It's how he achieved his success. Leadership Track would like to welcome you for the next half hour while we visit with basketball's living legend, John Wooden. Coach, thanks for being with us on our show today. You're very welcome. It's nice to be here. Uh, you've had a busy day already. We won't get into that, but mm -hmm. let's start from the beginning. How did your family of origin influence your coaching success? Well, I think, as I've often said, parenting is the most important uh, profession in the world, and I think I was very, very fortunate in my early days of uh, learning many things from my father and mother that uh, helped me shape the philosophy which I had in teaching uh, years later, and uh, um, there are many things along that line, but I believe more than anything else, it's uh, the foundation that's set in your early years. What would you say would be one of the most important things that your father taught you? I think that possibly is never try to be better than somebody else. Uh, always uh, understand that you will never know a thing that you don't learn from someone else, but uh, never try to be better than somebody else, but never cease trying to be the best you could be. Yeah, I can remember mm -hmm. you saying that uh, uh, that's under your control. Yeah. Uh, the other isn't, and if you get too engrossed, involved, and concerned in regard to things that you have no control, it'll have a negative effect on the things over which you have mm -hmm. or should have control. So focus on that over which you have max maximum control because you have limited control on those other areas. Correct. Coach, you talk a lot about truth and honesty. What role has truth played in your life? Well, I believe that it uh, enables you to have certain serenity or peace, tranquility, uh, as dad said in one of the sets of threes that he gave me and my brothers when we were in grade school is uh, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. And I can remember him saying that if you never lie, you know, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember what mm -hmm. you say. And if you lie, one lie will lead to another. And I know I never understood that at the time. And But somewhere in the hidden recesses of the mind, I recall those things and I think uh, they are meaningful. Mm -hmm. You also talk about another set of three, no whining, no complaining, no excuses. That's another set of three that Dad gave us, is don't whine, don't complain, don't make excuses. Just do the best you can, and no one can do more than that. Would you coach differently today than when you were coaching, and if so, how? Well, I, I don't think so. There might be some changes in techniques because of some of the rules that have been different from the time that I taught. But the basic thing, it isn't in getting best results. It isn't uh, uh, the fundamentals. It's how you work with others when it's in a group activity. And and I believe that uh, that realizing that there's no progress without change. Uh, my basic philosophy, I don't believe in change hardly at all. Mm -hmm. You were a good basketball player, in fact, really good. Uh, what are some of the principles you learned as a player that have influenced your coaching style? Hard work, uh, much as anything else, and uh, and and get to the point where you enjoy what you're doing, but you must work hard at it. I think those eventually later became the cornerstones from a pyramid. We watched you for many years as the coach at UCLA, yet you referred to yourself as a teacher. What's the difference? In reality, there is no difference, in my opinion. All a coach is is a teacher. Uh, 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 um, you're teaching more things than just, however, the subject matter. Like um, I taught English for many, many years, and uh, prior, always prior to coming to UCLA. And um, uh, you're teaching 
not quite the same things in the English classroom as you are on the basketball court or the baseball diamond or the football field or something because there's other things you have to get uh, across more that are extremely valuable. Um, you're not working together so much in an English class, but you are. You must be working together in some sport of that sort. So I think there's much to be attained uh, uh, and acquired uh, from teaching activities in sports that you don't get in the classroom for mm -hmm. teaching the solid subjects. But you, you learn that you must have a program, you must have a, a program that you follow, you must have a plan for each day's activities just in the classroom or on the court, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. You also were at UCLA coaching for 15 years, I believe, before you won a national title. Mm -hmm. Do you think that in today's college environment, uh, they would allow you 15 years to produce a championship team? Well, they depend on a lot of other things. Uh, there, there are certain reasons why you couldn't. I, I've said, for my, in my case, when I've asked, how, how, how come it took you 15 years to win a national championship? And I said, well, I'm a slow learner, but you'll <laughs> notice when I learn something, I have it down pretty good, and mm -hmm. that's the important that's good. thing. That, <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I think that if you conduct yourselves in a proper manner and those under whose supervision you are understand that you're working for more than just the um, outcome as far as the score of a game, I think that you're going to be okay in, in the vast majority of places. Some, maybe not. Mm -hmm. uh, based upon your pyramid of success, I want to throw out some words, not all of them, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you just comment on some of those words. Mm -hmm. Self-control. Uh, keeping your emotions under control so that you'll be able to execute whatever you're doing near your own particular level of competency. Poise. Being yourself. I, I've defined, coined my own definition of poise. It's just being yourself. Adaptability. Uh, realizing that situations change and you must change according to the uh, situation. Intentness. Keeping focused on your objective. Cooperation. Being considerate of others and uh, know you're not alone in anything, that there's others with you in one way or another. And uh, when you give, you receive. Skill. Being able to ex execute not only properly, but quickly. Alertness. Being uh, uh, observing everything that's going on around about you and uh, uh, the things to do as well as the things not to do. What would you consider your greatest responsibility as a coach? I believe um, as time went by, maybe I didn't realize it so much in my earlier days, but as time went by, my, my great responsibility is to uh, teach those under your supervision the value of an education and to know that education <clears throat> is going to be very meaningful for the, all their lives and the sport is going to uh, be meaningful for only a comparatively short uh, uh, part of their lives. And um, But they can help you in the other things that are going to be meaningful in the, in the later years. But I believe that uh, is the main responsibility of a uh, teaching your youngsters to be considerate of others and to uh, uh, know that hard work will bring uh, uh, desirable results, maybe uh, within the limits of your own particular uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. In your humble opinion, uh, what would you consider as your greatest strength as a coach? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, but I've been that a number of times, I, I, I think that uh, it's, it's hard for a person to recognize and analyze their own weaknesses, but I believe one of my strengths was organization, uh, being able to accomplish things in a minimum amount of time. Um, I, I think others have said that, too, about me, and I sort of believe that that was um, uh, one of my strengths, and then getting my youngsters to work together uh, for the welfare of the group the other, rather than just individual statistics. I believe I was... Uh, very successful in that. You coached a lot of years, and as a coach, what would you say was probably one of the most difficult decisions you ever had to make? I think that when you have to discipline someone under your supervision or you have to decide uh, who's going to get the letters at the end and who's going to be your traveling squad and, uh, and um, who should uh, be playing at this certain time and to make this proper uh, substitution adjustments you have to make. Those are 
When you have to make a decision that you know is going to affect others, those are the difficult decisions you have to make. And sometimes we don't realize how much a certain decision you're going to make is going to affect others. 